Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a series of writings using a Mac app called Bear. Okay, so it might sound like something a little bit obscure. However, there does come up a time from time to time as we are doing various types of writings that it helps to create a group or a collection of writings. So think of it this way. Maybe you want to create a series of documents for a campaign that you're doing and each of these individual documents handles a, a, you know, a specific topic as opposed to creating a really long Google Doc or Microsoft Word document. So one of the examples of this that I use pretty regularly would be something that's called an email drip campaign. So you may be familiar with this, maybe not. Essentially what it is is a series of automated emails that get sent over a period of time. So after somebody first joins your list, after maybe the first two days they'll receive an email, three days later or a day later they'll receive another email, so on and so forth. And these can go sometimes for a week to two weeks, even up to a month. I've never personally done one that goes that long. However, it's a great way to be to be able to continually offer value to someone after they originally sign up for your email list. So in addition to just delivering value and no, you don't just wanna spam people, you don't want each of these emails to just kind of be annoying. But what you do want to do or something that you can do at the end of this sequence is lead up to the sale of a product. So if you've got a digital product, a course, or even if you've got coaching or consulting, or if you're a freelancer, it's a great way to be able to do that. So I reached a point where I was creating a number of these various drip campaigns, and I was at a loss for just a simple way to organize this. So I had in the past, what I would do is I would just create a Word document for each of these individual emails that I was going to send out. I just found that it was not that simple to collect and to share and to copy and paste into my email program. If you are familiar with some of my bear tutorials in the past, one of my biggest gripes with most of the other word processors out there is that they copy a lot of not wanted formatting along with them. So when you copy and paste from a word document into WordPress or into ConvertKit or into a WYSIWYG editor of any kind, a lot of times what you can run into is weird unexpected formatting. That's because it's pulling a bunch of information with it. Whereas if you use something like Bear, which is fully Markdown based, you can actually copy it and then paste it in a number of different formats. You can copy it in Markdown. You can copy it in rich text, clean rich text. You can also copy and paste it in plain text. So you can also paste it in HTML. So it's a great way to be able to get the cleanest formatting out of what it is that you're writing. And one of the gripes I've heard recently about Bear uh, in a number of different places is that people seem to be upset that it doesn't have more advanced formatting, that you can't create tables and you can't do, you know, indexes and, and things that you would expect from something like Microsoft Word. And so what I would tell people in that scenario is that if you want something like that, then use Microsoft Word. The beauty about Bear, in my personal opinion, is that it is so simplistic. It gets everything out of the way and it lets you just write. So what I would recommend is if you need uh, software that provides you the ability to create tables and indexes and table of contents and things like that, what I would recommend is do your basic writing, getting your ideas onto paper or onto screen. Uh, I would use something like Bear for just your writing and then copy and paste it in rich text format or whatever format that you want from Bear into that other writing uh, software program. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at how to create a series using Bear. Okay, so here I am within Bear and what I typically do is I keep all of my active notes or things that I'm currently working on in the notes section and then once I have finished working on something, I go ahead and I archive it. So for example, if I was finished with this note, I would just go ahead and click archive. That's kind of my system. I've seen a lot of people use a bunch of different tags and that sort of thing, but I actually use tags for my email series. So let's say this is email one in my series. Okay, so what I would do here is that I would write my email and all the contents here. So this is just a great way for you to be able to kind of get your ideas on paper or get your ideas down. Obviously when I say paper, I mean digital, of course. But let's go ahead and put some placeholder text in here. There we go. So let's say I just wrote out this email. 
And there we go. So here's what I do uh, in order to write a series, even though I've got a whole bunch of other uh, writings in this particular notes section. So here's how I would organize that. I would do a hashtag, let's say it's a campaign called VSM email series. So then I would add a tag to the bottom of this and then there we go. You'll notice what happens is that a hashtag or a tag shows up over here. So then I'm set. I've got my first email all written. And so now all you see over here are things, since I clicked on the tag, all you're gonna be able to see are things over in this left-hand sidebar that have that tag as well. So all you do is you click on that new button, my next email. Hi, me again. There we go, I wrote that email, so to speak, obviously I'm just doing placeholder text, but you get the idea. And there we go, I've got that second email. So this is what I do when I'm ready to start writing. I just start clicking and then email, email number three. And there we go. And I just keep going through this series as I'm writing out all of these things. And then they're all in one nice little collection. And so what I do next is once I have finished this email, I've uploaded it to my email provider, then all I have to do is shift, hold all of these, drag them to the archive, and they are all gone. They're out of the way and I don't have to worry about fumbling around with any uh, third-party apps or anything like that. The great thing is too, as I'm working on them, if I ever need to, I can just go ahead and click on one click on this little hashtag here if I need to, and it takes me there as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a quick look at how I would put something like this into practice using ConvertKit's uh, sequences. If you don't already have an account, head over, head on over to rightly.co slash ConvertKit or rightly.tv slash ConvertKit, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click new sequence. And we're just gonna call this rightly TV test. If you're not very familiar with the concept of how to create sequences, it's pretty simple. You just create new emails over here and you pick how often they get sent out. You can specify whether or not they're a draft. So let's say this is my very first email and then I'm going to add another email. And this is going to be the first email that I had created right here. So this is the first one in the series. So here's how my workflow would look for that. I would copy and paste in my email series right there. But then let's say maybe I had italicized this text right here, or maybe, you know, there was some bold right here, something like that. Uh, so what I do is I would then, and usually there's gonna be a link in here somewhere. So here is the main CTA link. There we go. So what I'm gonna do typically is I'm after I've written my email, it's all good to go. I'm gonna right click and then I'm going to go copy as HTML. And the reason I do HTML is because it is going to give me the absolute uh, purest format of this. I don't have to worry about any weird rich text or anything. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna click on the HTML tag, select everything, press, press paste, control V, and then there you go. It's perfectly formatted. I don't have to add anything. I don't have to change anything. It's good to go right there. So I can just save all of my emails and just repeat the process. I can just go ahead and click new email, paste in the headline, paste in the copy, drag those around, and it makes for a very clean experience. Okay, so that's it. Really quick tip for you today. I know that that was really simple, but hopefully you can put this to use for whatever type of writing you do. Maybe you don't do email sequences like I do. Maybe you're trying to write a book. Maybe you've got a series of podcast episodes. Maybe you've got a series of blogs or videos. But one of the things that I've found is that if you can keep things simple, streamlined, and organized, they're gonna help you create things much faster. So I can tell you now, I've almost cut the amount of time it takes me to write emails in half simply because I have a workflow, as simple as it might be, to be able to do that. So if you haven't already tried Bear, I highly recommend it. Not an affiliate for Bear. It's just something that I've been using for years simply because it's very simple in its organization and it's very clean in its user experience and it exports to just about any format you would need, like I said, from rich text to plain text to HTML. So as always, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. 
Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this episode of Rightly TV. Be sure to click on one of the other episodes on this page. Plus, head on over to rightly.co where you'll be able to create a free account which will give you access to all the videos, the podcast, articles, downloads, and more. Again, head on over to rightly.co and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.